You guys, Copilot is finally here. We've been waiting for a while. Microsoft talks about AI all the time. AI, 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 AI. We found out that Copilot for Microsoft 365 was only available for 300 seats or more. And that put a big damper on us, but they kind of surprised launched this, this thing where you now no longer have to have that many licenses in order to get your own stand up version of Copilot. And so we got in on it. We're excited. We have been trying it out and learning what works, what doesn't work well. And what I have come to the conclusion to is Copilot is almost amazing. I'm gonna talk about why almost in just a second. But before we do that, I do wanna share that we are a channel all about Microsoft 365. If you want to learn how to streamline your business and align your people using all the tools that you already have, we are the channel for you. Would encourage you to go check it out and subscribe down below. So we kind of surprised learned about this launch. I think it was on LinkedIn and we shared it and we went to look in our admin center and it looked like we needed to integrate with a partner in order to get Copilot. And then the next day it became available. It was, it was a little bit of a, a flurry of events, but we got it. The things that you need to know about it is that you need to buy a seat for $30 a month for an entire year at the moment. You do get a seven day trial in order to see if it works, see if it makes sense for you. We jumped into the trial and I have to admit, the first day I was like, this is not worth it. Do not buy this thing, let's cancel. But over the week, it started to kind of grow on me a little bit and that's why now I think it's almost amazing. So the thing that happened over the course of the week, I'm gonna start kind of at the end, what, what made things better for, for me in my mind. And that was Teams. The Teams integration is almost invaluable. It allows you to just flip a switch at the beginning of a meeting, say, start the transcript, tell Copilot to start listening, and it's there, the whole meeting. It's listening, it's remembering what's said, and it's keeping track in its AI brain of all the different things that go on in the meeting. And so the most helpful thing that we have come to understand is we need to take a lot less detailed notes because Copilot's just listening and it's keeping track. Now I can go into a Teams meeting, there's a little chat window that pops open and I can say, give me a recap of the meeting or did we resolve the thing with Benjamin? Do we, did, was it clear? Did we tell him exactly what needed to be done? And it'll answer it for you. Or another really helpful one is, give me the action items that came out of this meeting. For anyone that sends recaps of meetings to everyone that was in the meeting, this is a game changer because it just does it and it's actually pretty good. It, truthfully, that feature alone is the thing that says we need to get it for all of our people because it makes meetings that much better. I know there's gonna be questions around like privacy and security of is Copilot always listening and, and things like that, but we're comfortable enough with it that we're saying, yes, this is the winner for us. It's all the other tools that Microsoft has started to integrate Copilot with, which is where some of my frustrations started to come from. So Microsoft has been pitching this AI thing for a while, hard, <laughs> and they have sort of been pitching it as this supercharge your workday kind of integration with all the tools. Something that is so deep in your tools that it is just going to do things for you and think ahead and just know about all the context about your workday and just come alongside you and be your, your co-pilot. When I came to actually start using the tools though, I learned that it's not quite at that like metal foundation of the tool that it's integrated in. It's a little bit different than that. And so I wanna walk you through kind of how I discovered this so that you can know how to use these tools yourself. So let's say I want to create a PowerPoint presentation. And it, this reminds me a little bit of like, you know, when Clip, Clippy was in Microsoft Word and they'd pop up and say, what can I help you with? This is very much the same kind of thing just 20 years later. I can click this Copilot 
icon here and it's gonna say, hey, here's some things you can do. Ask me some questions and prompt me to do things. And so I view this as like blue ocean, like green field, like just, it can do anything for me. So like, let's, let's try it. Let's say, can you create me a presentation about, about internal communication at a workplace? It's thinking, ooh, look what it did. I'm sorry I was not able to generate those slides for you. Is there something else I can do to help you build the presentation? Strange, I was able to create a presentation the other day. Let me try it one more time. Can you create me a pitch deck for M365 Copilot? Okay, that was different. I don't know why. Maybe someone knows why. Uh, it's a little strange. This is like sort of where my frustration <laughs> stemmed from was it's a little bit unpredictable. Let's look through. It's an AI powered platform. There's a problem statement. Microsoft 365 Copilot is the solution. Here's some key features. Here's some benefits. Competitive landscape, pricing, testimonials. Great, okay, you know, I really wish, I don't wanna talk about pricing too much. I want to talk about some of the risks that are like about privacy or security, things like that. So can you get rid of the pricing slide and create some slides about the risks of Copilot and AI. It says, okay, here you go. The pricing slide has been removed. New slides have been created about the risks of Copilot and AI. Uh, they're not, they're not here. Uh, so I think I've shown, an, this frustrated me, you guys. This is, this is what said, I've been, I've been had, this is a, a, a bad sale. We should not keep up with this. The thing that I need to keep in mind here is that this is brand new. It's not integrated at that base level. It's actually integrated a different way, which I'm gonna show you here in a second. But I had to sort of encounter these things on my own and it was a poor experience for me. I hope they can make it a little bit better before other people start hitting these these same walls. So this is this is not to badmouth Copilot. This is I, I recognize that this is going to be super impactful on the workplace. But I need this onboarding, this experience to be a little bit better to not scare people off from these cool tools and what they could be. So it didn't remove the slide. I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of that. What I found is that there's two different ways that you can work with Copilot in here. It says, ask questions and work with this presentation. So the ask questions part is, you should think about this if you've used ChatGPT, ChatGPT right inside the tool, it's gonna know about what you're creating in this document and it can take that and, and respond to you in the prompt, very much in a similar nature of text-based, give you recommendations, not really interact or create or manipulate your, your presentation. And so I needed to, to think of that as one way that I could interact with it. The other way that actually manipulates the presentation is a little bit more controlled. And that's where a lot of my misunderstanding came from, which was it's not built at this base level. It's Copilot is built at this like service layer level where the tool is here and Copilot stands above it. And Microsoft gets to dictate what different things Copilot can do within the tool. Like, let's look at this view prompt. It's giving me recommendations for create, understand, edit, ask. These are all things that Microsoft has said. Copilot, you can do these things in PowerPoint. So like create, add a slide about best practices for AI. So one dimensional prompt before I was saying remove a slide 
and add more. They might have got confused about that. Let's see if it adds. Okay, sweet. It added best practices for AI. The only things that I can do with this presentation are the things of this nature. I can create, understand, edit, or ask. I cannot delete a slide. That was not obvious to me. It told me that I can't delete a slide, but why not? I thought this was, this was built right on top of the tool. It's not. And so the more that I began to understand these prompts and what Copilot can actually do in PowerPoint, the, the more okay with it that I, that I grew because in the end, what's gonna happen is Microsoft is going to continue to invest in the, these things, hopefully, right? Hopefully they're not just gonna like get it to a certain point and say, sounds good. It's happened before. Uh, hopefully they keep investing in this and continuing to add connectors between these apps and these tools so that it becomes more natural for me to just rely on Copilot for more of the interaction with the tools and not hit these walls of, you can do this, but you can't do that. Because that, it's friction, it's annoying, and it is not something that is gonna keep users around for a long time without some upscaling at least. So I know that this specific example that I'm giving is just one small part of Copilot and it's across the board in Microsoft 365, there's M365 chat that knows about all the documents in your workspace and can create things or just know about all the domain information that you have about your workplace. But I just wanted to get this out there so that you understand if you're getting people a seat to this thing, there's a little bit of context that needs to be set for them in order to use these tools and love them and understand the amazing part of almost amazing and be willing to dive in. So like I said, the team's part is well worth our money. Anyone that, any of our clients that we're gonna be talking to, we're gonna say, you should get this thing because that alone is gonna be worth it. Benjamin just told me this is like a confessional. <laughs> you guys, it, it's what it feels like a little bit. I'm not trying to dog on the tool. I'm trying to set context for if you are starting with Copilot, here's things that you should know. And here's expectations that you should have because I don't want your users to be upset. I want them to come into this journey, be prepared and be willing to accept the fact that it's an evolving thing that will grow over time, there might be some hitches, and be confident that it's going to get better over time so that they keep trying. And so hopefully that message is kind of woven throughout this thing. It came around for us, the team's integration made me feel a lot better about the subscription. It's incredibly useful. And so I'm hopeful that the rest of these apps and the integrations with them come alongside that, that Teams integration and, and feel the same way and just make this feel like an obvious no-brainer for anyone that has a subscription for Microsoft 365. So yeah, Benjamin, that's my confessional. Uh, I'm interested to know what you think about Copilot. Do you have a seat to it already? What are some valuable ways that you've been using it? Uh, Mike on our team was sharing, what's your MVP? What's your most valuable prompt that you've been doing? Super valuable. Okay, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. Before you go, I do want you to know if you are a business leader who leads an organization and you're trying to improve your internal communication and try to get your team to be more connected with each other, we wrote a complete guidebook on how to improve your internal communication. And we do actually have a free course available for it that kind of gives you a sneak peek into what's included in that. We'll leave a link down below. All right, I've said enough. Go try Copilot. Let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.